Kirk Irwin here with Roddy Arts Project here in the courtroom gallery for an artist interview with artist Ella Mackinson. Ella is from the Charlotte area and has her bachelor's in fine art from the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. We take some time to sit down with her to talk about her inspiration, her journey, and some of the art on our walls currently. The exhibition is up through September 21st and the reception will be on September 19th. So here is Ella Mackinson. Ella, thanks for uh, joining us and taking a little bit of the time to do this interview with us so we can get to know you and your art and this show a little better, which we're very excited about. Uh, first of all, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, kind of your journey through how you discovered the visual arts growing up, and then uh, the journey to and back from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm Ella Mackinson. Um, I was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, I kind of started my artistic journey because my mom's an artist. She also, she's also a painter, so. And there's actually a lot of people in my family who are artistic, including my, my uh, twin sister and my older sister and my grandma. She was a quilter, so. Um, a lot of, of creativity. Them, yeah, a lot of cre creativity around me, so. That's where it really stemmed from, mainly from my mom with oil painting. So I was surrounded by like her oil painting supplies like ever since I was in mi uh, middle school. Mm -hmm. And then I like started falling in love with like drawing cartoons first, mm -hmm. like anime, you know, mm -hmm. like I found that that was like a really big thing for me. So I loved that and I started doing that, just filled so many uh, like sketchbooks with those kind of drawings. And then and then I decided to get a little bit more serious as I like progressed. And so I started using my mom's oil painting supplies and I started painting. And then I decided to go to Northwest School of the Arts mm -hmm. um, when I was in 10th grade. And that's in like North Charlotte uh, near the city. Um, so I went there and I had a great time. It taught me so much. And um, then after that, I decided to attend Pratt Institute mm -hmm. um, for fine arts, uh, yep. specifically painting. And so. I've just been growing and growing through school, so I'm like, technically, like a trained artist, I guess. You yeah. Know? So I've just been going through training like this whole time, and like now I'm like out of school and doing it on my own, mm -hmm. and really growing as like an emerging artist. Right. So, yeah, right. So you just graduated, mm -hmm. but you've also submitted some things. You've been in, uh, accepted into Art Pop mm -hmm. and other things. So you mm -hmm. and uh, the work you have here is uh, based on your thesis mm -hmm. that you started, and yeah. you're kind of bringing it to completion. So, um, how did you come into this particular thesis about uh, home going and coming back, that kind mm -hmm. of theme? Yeah, just like from the first moment I got in Brooklyn, I was very homesick. Yeah. Like, I missed home so bad. Like, the city can be intense. Yeah, it, it was such a big difference from here. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't realize it would be like that because I thought Charlotte was a pretty big city, but mm -hmm. not compared to New York. And so, Brooklyn's not even considered the city. Yeah, it's kind of outside <laughs> of it. So it's a little, like, safe haven from, like, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Like, Pratt has, like, a beautiful campus and with trees and nature. So mm -hmm. it was, that was, like, the selling point for me to, like, choose going there. So mm -hmm. that's why I went to Pratt. Um, yeah. And, and so that kind of stirred up this idea uh, that led you into your senior thesis mm -hmm. for your, yes. your BFA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the, the going away and then coming back home. It made me think of, um, there's are, there's are two things within like uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's works where, you know, The Hobbit is more about an adventure mm -hmm. and it's like uh, there and back again where mm -hmm. it goes out, has an adventure and come back. Mm -hmm. And then their Lord of the Rings is more like a quest. It's it's like you go out and want somebody's changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. Multiple people are changed. So, which would you say was that? It sounds like it might have been adventure, but mm -hmm. then it became perhaps a quest. I think both. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a quest to like get like this education that was like very hard to like imagine having. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard hard to get like have the privilege to go like to that kind of school. So it was like, like I, like uh, I was su successful in my quest. And then, but I also was like, I can go back home and like keep, bring back what I learned down here mm -hmm. and like teach a lot of other people about it. And right. you know, so that was, it was a little bit of both. You know? yeah, yeah, both the question. Yeah, good. So um, in your work, um, 
you uh, you speak about this in your statement, but it's also obviously visible in, in your work. You use a cross between uh, quilts and uh, oil painting. You said your your mother was an oil painter, mm -hmm. so and those two kind of are interacting together. Mm -hmm. Now quilts. Um, speak very strongly to that art and craft community uh, where it's not as refined, whereas oil painting uh, many times can be seen as more of the fine art of things. So tell us about sort of that, that tension. Why did you choose that and, and mm -hmm. where did you hope it to send mm -hmm. it or to go with it? Yeah, well, I first had the idea to start introducing quilting into my work because I wanted to use like references from my own life. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother was a quilter um, and so like I took the motifs like the star in the quilt mm -hmm. um, and put that into my paintings first and then I realized that that wasn't really working for me so I decided to like actually use fabric instead of painting like the patterns. Okay so you started painting the quilting yeah. at first. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then I slowly moved like there was a lot of experimentation to get to this point. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't immediately think like painting and quilt like sewn together would work. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that at first, but right. eventually I got there. But I loved having both together because quilting is like, like historically it's women's work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like um, thinking about women and their experience in the South was kind of another like aspect to have a conversation with oil with quilting, oil painting, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and because fine art is like, and painting is like mostly ran, or like men are the main like yeah. uh, people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's interesting because um, uh, fabric art has really grown in the last half dozen years at mm -hmm. least that I'm aware of as I've been working in the arts to becoming almost mainstream now and yet it it still holds that tension of being um, rural colloquial um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, not as refined mm -hmm. and uh, we live in an area where there is lots of textile mm -hmm. generation that was yeah. made by all the sexes yeah, exactly. <laughs> so even though the quilting was done traditionally by women it was yeah. like well the production of those materials was actually done by that's by true. everyone so that's that's interesting to see mm -hmm. that tension do you do you, um, have you seen that in other places, other artists as well? Like mm -hmm. that, uh, using something rural or um, backwoods, I guess, I'm not trying to be degenerating mm -hmm. here, but uh, but also crossing it with something fine arty. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Yeah, uh, like uh, Faith Ringgold is one of my main inspirations. Okay. So she like makes quilts and paints on top of them. Oh, okay. So that was one of my main inspirations mm -hmm. for that. So, yeah. Does she come from a more rural background as well, kind of similar history, do you know? I don't, I think she's from New York. Okay. I might be wrong. Right. I think she's from that area. But she's still tackling the same themes yeah, yeah. and ideas. That's, mm -hmm. that's good. Now, tell us more about, you, you mentioned this uh, in some of what you wrote about your stuff here. Tell us more about growing up as a woman in the American South. You've mm -hmm. referenced it a little bit, and how do you see it um, perhaps different from uh, the experiences of women in the American South has actually come up in American history throughout, mm -hmm. you know, over and over again. I was thinking about this today, like Flannery O'Connor and her writing. I was just uh, watched the movie um, uh, Steel Magnolias with my <laughs> oh, my <laughs> wife and friends and, and yeah. uh, Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. So tell me about your experience as a woman in the American South and then maybe a little bit about commenting what you know of of those experiences of steel magnolias, fried green tomatoes, and even mm -hmm. Flannery O'Connor. Yeah, like in my family, at least my mom's side of the family, we're from uh, rural eastern North Carolina, like okay. down east, you know. And so would be considered low country, like the yeah, the, yeah near the coast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the equivalent to South Carolina. You're right, right, yeah, low country, so, that type of thing. Yeah, I just visit there all the time, and my family's mostly girls somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So mm -hmm. we're constantly, I'm surrounded by like Southern women mm -hmm. whenever I go down there. Right. So I just, and they always like tell stories of like my great grandmother or and mm -hmm. everyone else, all the other women. Right. Like, and those have like, those are ingrained in my memory. And like, I feel like I just have to like capture it 
and paint. Yeah. Like some of the paintings out in my show yeah. are paint. photos, right? Yeah, Somebody's, they're based on yeah. photos of my family mm -hmm. and yeah. those women I, I have heard about but never Over met. and over again, yeah. yeah. It's almost like you could, in your paintings, see like Flannery O'Connor in the background mm -hmm. or some of the women from Steel Magnolia sort yeah. of walk in, you know, because it's... You're picking off that history and, and, mm -hmm. and lifting it up to some degree. Mm -hmm. So how would you, think about this, how would you describe the relationship between kind of the folk craft art idea, the area, art you've kind of seen and the creativity you've seen with your family and your family history and the women, and then the fine art idea of um, oil painting? How, how would you, is it, um, what kind of relationship do you think it has uh, to each other as far as fabric and fine kind of art and then uh, tell us about a little bit about your experience with it in general what where, where was it difficult at times and then where was it easy maybe to integrate those yeah. two yeah I used to think like folk art was like not for me like but mm -hmm. I was surrounded by it and I didn't even realize it right <laughs> like right. my parents collect a uh, folk art so mm -hmm. I had folk art paintings around my childhood home yeah. and it's, they're still there. So I've seen that my whole life and I didn't really think of it, anything of it because mm -hmm. it was just so normal to me. Right. So right. that's why I wanted to go to art school and like have the best art education I could get and yeah. go to New York and go to the highest level museums possible and see mm -hmm. all the... Well, I can grow beyond that, right? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. oh, we got folk art, but yeah, now... Yeah. Okay. But then I was like, wait, it's so special mm -hmm. and like... The people who make folk art aren't trained, and it's like from the soul, you know. Right. So it's just they're not really special. caring about their refinement. They're yeah. just caring about expressing themselves mm -hmm. and whatever. Right. Yeah, definitely. And they both textile and painting, like they interact with each other for me because mm -hmm. I can get like pattern inspiration and color inspiration from textiles. Right. And likewise from painting. You know, for the textile. Well, and you even talked about it earlier about trying to paint the quilt pattern, but then realizing mm -hmm. that's not really working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't really want to get the quilt material yeah, and yeah, integrate yeah. it. So, yeah. have you ever been to um, Colonial Williamsburg? Yes. And, and they have a really big folk art museum. Mm -hmm. My wife and I went in there a couple of years ago. Oh, I was really? just, yeah. we were amazed at how, how much and how really, uh, well, I'd say genuine in some ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of it was just functional. It's like, well, mm -hmm. you just had to make a toy. And they just got really creative yeah. with that toy that became something more mm -hmm. yeah. after a while. I think there was a whole layout. Somebody had carved the entire Noah's Ark wow, and yeah. uh, all the animals and everyone involved, yeah. the family of Noah. And <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's really a, a fascination for us um, here at the Courtroom Gallery for Arts Project. So of the show that you have up here with uh, Every Stitch of Reckoning, which piece of it right now, and it might not be a piece in the show, it could be one that you, you've held back, but best describes where you are with some of these ideas of folk and fine art, um, going away from home and coming back, and uh, which do you think kind of reflects the most right now as, as mm -hmm. you're growing as an artist? Yeah, there's one piece that's not in the show right now. Um, it's called the Every Memory Quilt, and mm -hmm. it's like an actual like life-size quilt. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like almost the size of uh, like a twin bed okay basically that so um that one i'd say is where i'm really headed i want to make more large scale quilts right. with like a bunch of paintings in it mm -hmm. like um the show sorry the um the quilts that i have in this show they're all mostly just one painting mm -hmm. with kind of like a frame around it right of right quilt. Mm -hmm. and i thought that that was like not balanced like the the painting was more special than the quilt in a sense. Right. More focused on the painting. So if I made make bigger works, the they'll be equal if there's more than one oil painting in the quilt. Yeah. So it works together as like a whole. So yeah, that's I want to do more more quilts and that'd be interesting. You should uh, we should find a way to hang that up for the closing. Maybe yeah. we have that big wall back in the back yeah, yeah. we could hang it up and just, yeah, I can bring it yeah that would be great and we should do that yeah so um uh what uh what are you working on right now is that that piece or are you going further with that piece um, you say large scale you yeah, kind of reference that piece it is done but i have like just got an idea for another large piece and i'm planning on working it starting it soon mm -hmm. i'm just kind of doing studies right now trying yeah. to plan for it because mm -hmm. it's going to be big and i need to make sure i know what i'm doing 
mm -hmm. to get there. It'll take a while. But are you are you uh, getting quilting in, input from your family? Um, not now. My grandmother actually passed away like oh, two sorry. years ago, oh, sorry. and she was the only one who quilted. But okay. my twin sister does like she makes textiles and mm -hmm. like corsets and costumes. Yeah. So she kind of helps me with sewing yeah. a lot of the time. Well, it sounds like you keep your grandmother's. Uh, yeah. Quilting going, and yeah. that's really cool. There you go. So tell us, um, how can people see more of your stuff on, um, if they want to look into some more of your art? Mm -hmm. Where can they go? They can find me mainly on Instagram. That's where I'm most active, mm -hmm. at Ella Raywin, E-L-L-A-R-A-E-W-Y-N. That's mm -hmm. my first name and middle name. Okay. And you can also go to my website, ellaraywin.squarespace.com. Okay. Yeah. We'll put that information up too so that people can get access to it as well. Um, Ella's uh, work is going to be up now through uh, September 21st. Uh, we are having the closing reception on September 19th. That's a Thursday night from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, that is also a night for an Old Town Gallery crawl. So there will be um, several uh, receptions going on that night in the downtown area. So you can catch Ella's work here in the courtroom gallery, as well as the galleries in downtown Rock Hill. Ella, thanks for uh, joining us and giving us a little bit of your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great hearing from you. I really like what I've heard really good things from people in their response to your work. Uh, we look forward to seeing uh, more of it in the mm -hmm. time to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And thanks to Ella Mackinson for also joining us for a few minutes to tell us a little bit about herself. As we said earlier, her work is up in the courtroom gallery now through September 21st. Uh, that is at the Guinness Center, 201 East Main Street, downtown Rock Hill. And her reception will be September 19th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. here also in the courtroom gallery. Also, she will be joining us for First Friday on September 6th, Friday, September 6th, from 5 to 8. As we have an open studio, she'll be available to you all, anybody who wants to come in and talk to her and look at her art and ask her any questions about it, she'd be available to talk to you all. So that will be September 6th from 5 to 8, and then the reception on September 19th from 6.30 to 8.30. Thank you again for joining us, and have a great day.